Hello everyone. Thank you for joining us again like for this 23rd uh, online class that we are doing today. Again, like we are broadcasting from uh, our headquarters in Kagawa, Japan. My name is Akira and uh, this is my colleague Megumi. And uh, so we're doing uh, Jiro Ramen today. Um, for those of you who don't know what it is, I'm going to explain what it is later. But um, so uh, let's get into the class. And uh, so we're going to start a slide. And um, so Jiro Ramen is something like really unique and um, it's very interesting. And um, yes, so this is very unique. And like, I guess like for those of you for joining us from overseas, um, I think there are many of you like who don't know what it is. Okay, so but um, before we get into the class, uh, let me, uh, well, allow me to like spend just a few minutes um, introducing ourselves. And uh, so we are Yamato Manufacturing Company. Uh, well, being like in this business um, of like noodle, fresh noodles for 45 years. Um, we basically manufacture noodle machines that are designed for um, such noodles as like ramen, udon, soba, pasta, um, other types of like Chinese style noodles and other things like, you know, that are made from scratch, um, from freshly uh, made from scratch. And they, our machines are designed basically for our restaurants and small production. And um, we, we've been also running um, noodle school for um, udon, ramen, and soba. So at our headquarters here in Kagawa, we have a school um, as well, like which um, I'm going to take you guys um, to later. And uh, we also have a school in Tokyo. Um, we have a school in Singapore, which um, we haven't been able like, con um, conducting any classes at, like because of the COVID-19 situations. Um, so we have customers using our machines in 61 countries and more. And we have eight offices in Japan, including Tokyo, Osaka. We have an um, office in Seoul, Korea, and we have one in Singapore, Netherlands, United States. And we also have like partners um, working with us in these different countries. So we are basically a um, team of noodle making experts that help our customers you know, succeed in their businesses by you know, providing training, um, you know, the recipes, uh, noodle making equipment or whatever they need um, to succeed in their businesses. So, so that's, that's, that's us. Okay, so today we are talking about zero style ramen. So first, like what is zero style ramen, right? What are the keys in making zero style ramen? And um, we're going to demonstrate how zero style ramen noodles are made. So zero style ramen noodles are kind of unique, I mean, compared to other types of ramen noodles. And we are going to, so today is like for the first time, we are going to, um, your zero style ramen is based on the uh, tonkotsu uh, stock. Uh, tonkotsu means uh, pork bone um, stock that's cooked for uh, long hours. And um, for the first time in this kind of class, we're going to demonstrate um, the uh, soup straining, the stock straining of tonkotsu stock. Um, we're going to show that in the kitchen uh, that's used for our school. And we're going to show how to put together a zero style ramen dish and followed by Q&A session. So if you have any questions during the class, please uh, send them in the comments. Be more than happy to answer those questions. All right, so let's start talking about um, zero style ramen. And first of all, like, so I guess like many people like, don't know what it is, right? And the zero is actually a Jap Japanese name for guy. So typically people give this name to uh, their second sons because the G means two or next. And it's just guy's name, and well, like, but it's a bit old fashioned in Japan. So you know, it's more well, many of um, 
newly born babies are not named this name. But anyway, like so zero step ramen is a type of ramen dish that's spawned from one ramen shop called Ramen Jiro, which was started by a Japanese cuisine chef, Mr. Yamada, in 1968 in Tokyo. So he developed a distinctive ramen dish that's now known as Jiro Ramen or Jiro Style or Jiro Inspired Ramen. Because of the large volume of his ramen, his ramen got very popular among young college students. And thanks to the unique taste and appearance of the ramen bowls, was featured on magazines and different media, so he got really famous. So since then, like many shops started copying and serving ramen dishes that are similar to Jiro ramen dish. And those shops are called Jiro style or inspired ramen shops. So this original Jiro ramen shop now has over 40 branched out shops in Japan. So Jiro ramen or Jiro style ramen dish is usually a big bowl of ramen noodle soup, which is usually tonkotsu or pork bomb stock with soy sauce based sauce. The soy sauce based sauce is usually made from the sauce that's used to season pork meat chashu, which are slices of braised pork meat um, that's served as the toppings. It's usually served with vegetables that are mainly um, bean sprouts and cabbage. The noodles are thick and often flat and are made of wheat flour with a high protein and ash content. So this, this flour is actually usually used for bread. And as the condiments and toppings, the dish has fresh ground or minced garlic, a piece of seasoned pork back fat, and others. You can usually make requests on your order to make some modifications such as bigger or small serving of noodles, pork back fat, vegetables, garlic, and season, seasoning or sauce. So some shops offer like raw eggs and curry powder and the other things that help customers finish their bowls. Because the serving size is big, it may be hard not to get fed up with the same taste until you finish your bowl. So some shops offer some condiments such as curry powder to alter the taste to help customers finish their bowls. So the high calorie and strong and fatty taste, it's considered a junk food, but it's also addictive. There are many fans of Jiro style ramen who wouldn't mind waiting for a long time for their bowls. For Jiro style ramen, shops are usually small with 10 to 20 seats or counter seats. There's usually long queues in front of the popular shops. So what's distinct about Jiro ramen compared to other types of ramen is its portion size is very big. You can choose the portion size that they, uh, they offer typically as small size in Jiro ramen shop. That, that's actually um, larger than the large uh, portion that's served in a regular ramen shop. So you may choose the larger, large portion that's offered in Jiro ramen shop, but you need to expect yourself to be able to finish two portions of the small size, which is again, larger than the large portion size of the regular ramen bowl. So because of the size, it takes time to finish a bowl, but there's usually a long line of people waiting for their seats. So there's big pressure on you to eat and finish your bowl and get out fast. That big portion size was originally intended for hungry and young college students who may not have much money. And it's, it's a challenge for anyone to go to the um, Jiro Ramen shop and finish a bowl with Jiro Ramen. And Jiro Ramen shop has sort of like kind of different kind of food culture, kind of like atmosphere inside the shop. Once you're in a Jiro Ramen shop, like it's, um, there are some unique rules that you may need to follow inside the shop, such as how to order, modifying the amount of vegetables, oil, fat, seasoning, sauce, etc. And you may have to like clean and tidy up the table after you finish eating. Customers are asked to clean the tables after eating because ramen Jiro shops are usually run by two people. 
the owner and the assistant. So they are very easy to like take care of uh, each of the customers they serve. The serving size is big. The noodles are thick and hard. The soup is very strong in taste and flavor. Toppings and condiments are also very strong. So basically, I may be accurate to describe a bowl of jigo ramen as a strong noodle meal rather than a delicious meal. The strength makes certain people addictive and has been a reason for zero star ramen success and popularity. It's almost like a religion or cult, and the fans are very fanatic. And many jigo ramen shops make their own noodles, maybe because the size uh, portion sizes of their noodles are very big. So making their own noodles helps reduce the cost and pass the savings to the customers who enjoy their bowls for as low as like six to eight, seven dollars. Doing the house made noodles allows them to make and serve unique noodles. They can choose what they put into their noodles and freshly, I mean, freely change their, their recipes. So making their own Noodles enables to um, serve big saving, servings of fresh noodles at low price. But if they buy the noodles from a factory, they may need to charge more to keep their businesses. So this may slow the growth of their businesses. So doing the house-made noodles contributes to the um, business success. So when it comes to noodles of Jiro style ramen, the noodles are not really um, in the usual patterns of like well textured noodles, um, I'm going to explain that in a um, bit later uh, in a different slide. But so this is a typical kind of like um, the noodles that you may uh, encounter the jiro ramen, well, uh, well jiro ramen, and <clears throat> so the components right noodles, soup, toppings, and condiments, spices. So noodles are usually thick. Um, and like may, maybe flat, like sometimes straight, but like mostly curly, but high in ash content and protein uh, content. And then soup uh, is whole bone stock with the soy sauce based sauce. And again, like this sauce um, is used to season the um, pork meat uh, that's used for uh, toppings. So the toppings are uh, usually uh, bean sprouts, cabbage, shredded cabbage, um, pork cheshu, like slice of seasoned pork meat, seasoned pork back fat, uh, that's usually minced. And um, co as condiments, like usually like ground or minced uh, fresh garlic, curry powder, uh, raw eggs. So these are usually like kind of optional and um, you can order it to, uh, as a separate um, uh, small plates to as a as an option to help you sort of like finish the finish the bowl. So the toppings, um, the soup, the noodles, like so these are these are kind of like well balanced. But like each of the components, the toppings, tongue, the saw, a soup, noodles, like each each one was like very very strong. And so I'm talking about noodles and. I mean, I've been using this as a chart um, to describe um, you know, different types of noodles in terms of texture, um, just hardness, like chewiness, or like the size. And again, like, so this chart, the horizontal line um, represents the hydration of noodles. So like how much water, how much liquid is contained in noodles. Um, basically the less hydration, the harder the noodle texture. So the vertical line is uh, for a protein content of flour that's used to make these noodles. So the higher the protein, the harder the noodle texture. And the famous Hakata ramen or the tonkotsu ramen noodles, that's up there like on the top left corner. Um, so that's like low in hydration, but high in protein content. So this is hard noodle. And for the size, maybe you can see uh, look at the, the right side of this uh, chart. There's a size, right? Starting from 1.0 millimeter from the top down to 5.0 millimeter to the bottom. So this Hakata ramen noodles is pretty thin. 
a small size. So this is a thin and hard noodle. And if you see this like yellow circle that says like tsukeme noodles, lippy noodles, that's high in hydration and but low in protein content of flour it's used to make this noodle. So this is a soft noodle. But for the size, it's fairly thick, right? That's 2.2, 2.5 to 1.5 millimeter. So this is a thick and soft noodles. So it's, and you see the pattern, right? You see the, like, Hakata ramen noodles, like, it's thin and hard noodle. And tsukimen noodle, that's thick and soft noodles. And there are some other types of noodles, like, somewhere in, be in between these two extremes. <laughs> and I try to put um, the circle of, like, zero style ramen noodles within this chart, but it's, it's kind of hard because um, the Jiro ramen style noodles like is not really within the usual patterns of like well textured noodles, you know, like either thin and hard or thick and soft or somewhere in between these two extremes. So Jiro ramen noodles sort of like ignore these patterns and they use a use a bread flour, you know, which is like high in protein and ash content, and um, that's that's usually like 13 percent um, protein. Content. It's like this makes the noodle like really hard. Like even though the noodle is hard, like the noodle is made to very thick. So it's it's a thick and hard noodle. I think that to compensate this texture, like hard texture, the hydration is a little bit high, but the noodles are cooked probably the noodles cooked longer to make the noodle texture softer. So noodles have like distinctive noodle texture that make uh, Jiro ramen style unique and stand out from other types of ramen dishes. Okay, so let's uh, start talking about ingredients and then like I'm gonna kind of go quick. And um, so like protein we talked about and then this particular type of noodles um, that's used for uh, Jiro ramen style noodles has uh, typically, they use this type of bread flour and has the protein content like 13% plus minus 0.5%. And the ash content is very high. So ash is like a measure of how much minerals are contained in the flour. And then that affects the color of the noodles and the texture of the noodles. And then the color, like higher, higher the ash, uh, darker the color of the noodles. And then the tissue-wise, it um, makes the like, kind of the noodle texture not, not smooth, like but kind of a bit coarse. And it has ash kind of like 0.5%, which is like, which is pretty high actually for um, Japanese, uh, the wheat flour that's used for, to make um, um, noodles. And then this viscosity value is like, as a measure is like how elastic the noodles become. And uh, so that basically the higher the viscosity, the better the noodle texture. And so you need to be concerned about these uh, three values when trying to find a good flour for your ramen noodles. And um, so the protein and inside the wheat flour, like there's protein and starch in the water, a little bit like moisture percentage in it. So what, what changes the protein percentage and the starch percentage? And protein, we already said that, like that, that determines the hardness, the higher, harder. Uh, starch, inside starch, so the starch is kind of determines the bounciness of the noodle texture. And it also like starch gives the, so like sliminess, um, the texture. And um, that, I think the thicker the noodles, like thicker the size of noodles, more slimy that, sliminess that you sort of like kind of encounter like when you cook the noodles. As you can see the picture in the back, like, you know, there's a kind of sliminess um, on surface of noodles. And then especially like when you're cooking um, thick noodles like uh, tsukime noodles, I, after you cook them, like you should wash them, wash the like sliminess of the, the noodle surface, which is, which comes from the starch, the noodles. And the hydration, um, like talking about water, uh, so hydration, like how much water you add to the flour in the mixing to make dough. Um, 
because the Jiro ramen noodles are usually like kind of like probably categorized as medium hydration um, noodles and then medium hydration noodle means between like 30% and 39% and 30% means there's like so within like 13 kilograms of dough there's like three kilograms of liquid amount there's like 10 kilograms of solid amount like solid meaning like flour and other solid ingredients liquid means that that and there's like water and then like constant and other ingredients liquid ingredients so that that's what like 30 percent this hydration ratio means and basically the higher the hydration the shorter the mixing time and uh, talking about water um the kind of water we want to use for for example like cooking noodles especially when you're cooking like thick noodles like it takes longer time and um was like cooking a broth like for tonkotsu broth like you know we are cooking today uh for uh this jiro ramen um the 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 water matters like kind of water we use matters a lot and so kind of water we want to use is soft water and then um the the reason we want to use soft water is that like these um when cooking for example like noodles the constantly and salt and other things like that have to be released to the cooking water um in the exchange the noodle gets the water from cooking water and in ex this exchange process like kind of cooks the noodles and but like if you cook the noodles in hard water there's a magnesium like calcium and that, uh, things like that's already occupying the water right so there's less room for um these these ingredients to be released to so it takes longer time to cook the noodles so when you cook the noodles for a long time then the noodles melts the surface noodle melts which affects the noodle texture badly and then um the the longer time um you know we, we would have to like um spend more money labor um cooking noodles and um the yield of the noodle cooked noodles is actually bad because you know the, the noodle melts over time into the cooking water so we get less um water so there's nothing good about it good about using hard water to cook the noodles in the stocks so if you have to work with the hard water then just think about like installing something like this the in the image like the water softener to make your water softer softer that makes a big difference okay talking about um kansui kansui is a uh, one of the ingredients that we have to use for um, ramen noodles and um, what it does so like basically there are many types of kansi that are used and but like for noodles that are expected to be consumed in like within like one week or so um, the type of kansi we use is basically um, um, combination of potassium carbonate and sodium carbonate and the potassium carbonate uh, it just hardens the noodle texture changes the noodle color to yellow um, has a stronger kansi smell and sodium company does exactly the opposite and uh, we blend these two at different ratios and um, basically the thicker the noodles um, the you know we want to make it softer the softer we want to make it so we want to increase the sodium carbonate to uh, soften the noodle texture so we, we uh, blend them at different ratios Okay, um, so talking about the uh, noodle making processes, um, so this slide just talks about the um, how to build gluten structure inside dough. And so, we, you know, we weigh, uh, we measure the ingredients, the right, uh, the right ratios, and we mix it to make dough, and we rest it. And uh, these, these process like are very important to build uh, gluten structure uh, inside dough basically for um, good uh, noodle texture. And I'm gonna explain these like when we actually make noodles, maybe we actually make noodles uh, on a noodle machine later. And so thinning, cutting, portioning, resting, cooking, um, washing, chilling. Um, so these are the basic, basic processes um, when uh, making noodles and serving noodles. 
So we use um, this kind of cutter, uh, we, we call it slitter cutters, um, which has like a kind of fixed grooves for um, the fixed uh, width. So the width is controlled by this um, kind of cutter, uh, but like thickness we control by um, uh, like a roller gap. So we, we the our noodle machine has like this set of rollers and we can uh, control the um, roller gap. And then um, so by this roller gap, like we are controlling the thickness of the um, noodle and width is controlled by this um, the slitter cutter and um, the uh, the ramen noodles that are used for like zero ramen are uh, basically like kind of we be call a reverse cut or like you know kind of or flat um, noodles and um, and uh, we're gonna show you um, the kind of cutter we use later but like basically that has the deeper grooves for this kind of slitter cutter to um, cut um, a thick thick uh, noodle doughs um, into the slit and thick noodle doughs into the noodle strands. And um, so talking about like getting the ideal noodle texture. So like this is how noodles get cooked and soggy. And so basically fresh noodles, um, use cross section noodles and then um, the, the soup or boiling water kind of penetrates the noodles from the sides where the like the cut surfaces cut surfaces are and um the the water penetrates the noodles like towards the core and then um but there's like these small section noodles that's in the core like that's still fresh noodles and then so that's the sort of like um kind of last holds of uh the noodle texture that kind of makes the noodle texture kind of al dente texture and then over time, like the noodle, I mean, water painted the noodles, and then don't, when when the the fresh part of the noodle like disappears, and then I don't know, gets soggy. Okay, so um, that's what I had for the lecture part of this uh, class. But like, um, let me let me just uh, spend a few minutes, like just just explaining like benefits of like, homemade noodles. So. Um, me like the zero ramen shops like do um, house made noodles, you know, they make their own noodles and then because there are many benefits to that because uh, they can offer um, better, better noodles at lower cost and, uh, you know, if they can, if they buy uh, noodles um, from a factory, um, then they can control the quality, like, right? um, because they, they are the ones like who's putting like, you know, food making them and so, and then Again, like you know, more values to the customer, so they can control the cost and the quality, so you know they can pass their savings onto the customers, and so they can probably give the free noodles or like um, get a bigger portion of noodles, like at the same price or something, and the customers would appreciate it and like keep going back to the. That may be why the uh, the you know that may be like explain the popularity of uh, ramen shops, and then you the unique products. Um, your ramen noodles like uh, themselves like just unique um, compared to like other types like regular ramen noodles and I uh, can show your customers how you make your noodles from scratch and um, you know, it's, uh, our customers may be curious like us like you know how you make your noodles um, kind of part of education and like uh, so like it works as a really entertaining factor and again like the cost right Cost of noodles, like I guess, like you may have to pay more um, for because like it's a bigger portion. Usually, like um, you like uh, the portion size, uh, maybe like on average, like that's 120 grams or so in fresh um, noodle weight. But like when talking about like zero ramen noodles, like is maybe 200 grams, like so. Um, so the price may be like higher than like 50 cents. I use dollars per serving uh, if you buy from the factory. And if you make your own noodles, um, the cost of like producing one serving is maybe like 20 cents US dollars, including labor, including costs, utility fees. So you're looking at like 50 to 60% saving in savings. And if you think about like, you know, serving like selling 100, uh, 200 a day, and think about it like how much you're going to save like in a month or so. In a year, 
So that's that's a lot of stuff. And you can make a variety of products. Um, of course, like ramen noodles, like udon, soba, yeah, soba noodles, uh, Chinese style noodles, types of gyozas, wonton skins. We, we've done like in the previous classes. It's very exciting. And amount of space that you know that the noodle making room like takes up like it's very small and certificate setup of uh, the um, the smallest like noodle machine that we have like that's very um, small space. Okay, um, so that's that's kind of what I had like for the lecture part and then um, again like I mean, I've been saying this like in every class but like. So we have uh, locations in the following um, places. So we have locations in Singapore, New York, United States, Amsterdam, Holland, and Seoul, Korea. And you know, it's like for for those of you like who may have like maybe living closer to these locations or like um, who are interested in um, trying out uh, all the noodles like we make um, in the previous classes in this class, um, please feel free to contact us. Um, we try our best to make these noodles available to you, or we can provide um, private demos for you guys at these uh, locations. So please feel free to contact us. Okay. All right, so uh, let's start making some noodles. <clears throat> okay, so we have um, ingredients over here. And so this is a, uh, this is like, so some, some ramen shops in Japan actually use um, bread flour, which has like higher um, protein content than like, um, you know, ramen noodle flours that we have in Japan, which is uh, usually 11% uh, in protein content. Like this bread flour that they use typically like it has 13% um, protein content and the water, um, these the kansi and salt. So these are the, all the ingredients that we're going to put in into the noodles, right? And then this is the solid ingredients. These are the liquid ingredients. Okay, I'm going to mix them. And uh, this uh, noodle machine, which has this 10 kilograms, 10 kilograms mixer. By the way, this machine is called uh, Richman One machine, and this particular model is um, certified for CE Mark, and so that's that's good to be uh, shipped to um, EU countries and other European countries. Um, it has single phase, 230 volts, so you can plug it right into the power socket and start using it. And so this machine has this 10 kilograms mixer. Um, this means that you can mix up to 10 kilograms of solid ingredients. And then on top of it, you're adding uh, liquid ingredients. So at a maximum, um, you should be able to get 14 kilograms of dough at the time. So you can see the timer digitally and so we add this liquid um, which has the cancer powder and salt dissolved in it, the water. And uh, so she poured the water like liquid into the lid, which has these small holes, right? And so that liquid is added to the flour and the mixing like a little by little. That promotes the uh, good hydration of dough. And we, we can wait for the mixing, mixing to be done, um, which takes like 10 minutes. So we don't have that much time, that, that kind of time. So. Um, she, she prepared the dough uh, in advance. And so you saw that she put the dough into the, in the plastic bag, right? And uh, so she let the dough sit at room temperature. And that, that was the first uh, 
resting process. Resting process like helps um, kind of further develop the uh, the gluten structure inside dough, and it literally it rests uh, dough, meaning like so after the dough like is mixed um, in a mixer, it gets a lot of pressure from mixing, and um, so it's it's. The dough is like stressed out, and like if we go right into the next process, like which is uh, what she's doing right now, is like making the rough sheet of dough. Um, the gluten structure, gluten structure that's being developed inside the dough, uh, get damaged. So that's that's bad for the uh, the noodle texture. So we we want to rest it before we start doing this process called like rough forming. Now basically like we're making like rough sheet of dough first. So she's feeding dough and then you may you may be able to notice that the color of the dough which is like um, darker than uh, usual. So like it's yellow, it's yellow like from the uh, the potassium carbonate to the fancy that we added to the dough, but you may be able to notice that like it's a bit darker because the um, high ash content that we, we talked about, right? Um, so this high ash content, like uh, we, we said that like that's 0.5%, which is actually very high for, um, for um, ramen noodles and like other types of noodles that we Make in Japan because because I think like Jap Japanese are sort of like obsessed with the uh, color of white and uh, you know we we love like everything in white color you know bread um, noodles like udon uh, types of noodles but um, but like actually like ash um, is it's minerals. The concentrated meal, so they they actually good for your health. Like there's nutrients, salt with nutrients. So, well, but you know we we're trying to get rid of uh, as much of them as possible, like in the milling process, um, which is uh, to be stupid. But um, but because of the just the appearance, right? Um, uh, the color, uh, uh, like the milling. Process in Japan, like in, um, is, is being like designed and like polished to um, get rid of these nutrients as much as possible to have like really low ash content in, uh, in the many many types of flowers that are distributed in Japan. The dough is being fed to a set of rollers and to the roller gap. Um, that's set to um, 1.5 millimeter, and so that's that's 1.5 millimeter in thickness. So it's gone through this uh, set of roller and like it's uh, still rough like it's very weak you can you can rip it apart like pretty easily with the hand right well like you know so we want to make it stronger um, to um, to to make it like good texture and then like so we want to uh, what we want to do is that we want to separate the this sheet into two sheets right and then I combine them together through uh, the rollers so we, we call it um, we call it fast like combining process and so you're putting two separate sheets together to one through a set of rollers and then so the sheet is coming now and um, maybe able to see that See how smoother it is than before. 
And so that was 1.5 millimeter in each, uh, in thickness, like for each of the, the sheets. And so the the dough that's going into the rollers is uh, are supposed to be the thickness of them is supposed to be three millimeter in thickness. It's 1.5 plus 1.5 plus three three millimeter. So three millimeter equivalent dough is going to through the rollers, which she set to um, two two millimeter. So we we want to because we want to like gradually thin the dough, not drastically, um, because that would damage the unit structure of the dough. So we want to um, reduce the uh, the thickness by seventy uh, percent, the three times. 70%, 0.7, but to make it simple, like run it down to 2.0. So after the first combining process, uh, we want to do another round of it. Just to make sure that good structure is well developed uh, thoroughly. So again, we are combining them again. Um, so that was supposed to be like two millimeter in thickness, like each of the dough, each of the dough sheet was. And so two plus two, that's four. And again, like 70%, uh, four times 0.7, uh, 2.8. But like this time, like we want to make simpler by rounding it up to three. So the roller gap is set to three millimeter. Right, so after the second combined process, so the good instruction inside dough is like thoroughly developed. It's complete, right? So all we have to do is just thin it, thin the dough, dough sheet, to the final thickness. And And um, so zero ramen, style ramen is uh, reverse cut. Like this, this uh, version is reverse cut. So like we're using this um, cutter that has like deeper roof, so that this kind of slitter can cut like kind of thicker noodle dough and the dough sheet. And 18, number 18 means the width is. 1.7, but the, the thickness is supposed to be like for a regular type of ramen noodle, like thickness is supposed to be 1.5 millimeter. But this is the zero ramen noodles that we are talking about today. So um, the thickness is actually the bigger for these noodles. And so it's, it's called like reverse cut noodles. So it's reverse, like it's usually the width is bigger than thickness. But this noodle, like thickness is bigger than width.
So the noodles are coming now, and well, the um, as I said, like the portion size, like Jiro ramen is very big. So we're making um, big big portions, but you can you can control the portion size by uh, changing the length of the noodles. So there's like a cutter that rotates portion of the noodles inside this machine. So you can uh, cut the noodles um, the certain length to, um, and as you can see this, this is the cut surface. So you see like this is uh, the surface is pretty rough. So that's the part, the surface that like this, the slit or cut. cut. And, um, Sorry, this is the this is the width, right? This is the width, and this is the thickness. So, see, like, uh, width is 1.7 millimeter, and then, but the thickness is 3.5. So that's that's really really, um, <laughs> it's it's very reverse uh, cut, and um, so this this type of noodles are like very popular, like for um, Jiro style ramen noodles and um, IEK ramen noodles, like you know, we, we, we did in the previous class. And um, for those of you like, who are interested in it, uh, you can check out the uh, recording of the, the class that we have on our YouTube channel. Okay, uh, so we have, um, we can take up like eight students at the time um, because you know, each student um, has his or her own like ideas, like what kind of ramen, what kind of uh, udon dish that they want to make, right? So we want to do like kind of a one-on-one -on -one session so that um, each student can um, kind of full, kind of has like kind of full attention of our instructors and then our instructors can help like with their um, full potential. And um, so today we are, we're cooking, uh, we, we actually cooked the, um, the tonkos broth over here. And um, so we have like these induction cookers, like big ones uh, to be able to cook um, like very thick um, running stocks, like this type of like tonkos stock, which have like eight to like 10 degrees of like thickness, like bricks. Um, so you, you have to have like kind of like big induction cooker, uh, high power induction cookers to be able to cook this type of uh, emulsified um, thick stocks. And um, so our instructor cooked it today and uh, from scratch. And uh, so like each uh, induction cooker may be like cooking different types of stocks um, when we're doing like our school. And so like each student can taste, you know, how each uh, stock may taste, right? So um, they, they can play around like the different uh, components, different stocks, different um, taste sauces that we make from scratch, different like flavored oils. So basically like, they can, you know, work with like different components. So this is like kind of lab, like why they can play around, play around like with the different um, things to make their own uh, ramen dishes, like you know, recipes. And um, so it's, it's very interesting, very exciting. Um, okay, so we have uh, instructor over here, Mr. Takeuchi, um, you can call him Thomas. He's uh, from Vancouver, Canada, British Columbia, Canada. And um, he's been working with us like as a, our instructor and um, he's, well, I like to have him because like he speaks English like a native speaker. So um, we're happy to have him to teach us um, uh, Jiro Stat Ramen today. So I'll pass it to Thomas.
Okay, uh, thank you. Um, once again, my name is Thomas. I'm one of the instructors at the Yamato Noodle School. And today's topic is Jiro Style Ramen. So let me just briefly talk about Jiro Style Ramen. So Jiro Style Ramen is a very unique type of ramen. And you either love it or hate it. And for people that, for people that who loves uh, Jiro Style Ramen, they almost have like a cult-like culture in the world. So let me just break up that Jiro Style Ramen into the five elements and talk about each one of them. Okay, so first, stock. So the stock for Jiro Style Ramen is emulsified or slightly emulsified pork stock. So they usually use pork stock, but depending on the shop, they either have very emulsified stock or slightly emulsified stock. And for the flavoring sauce, in Japanese, motodare. They usually use a soy sauce based motodare. And for the flavored oil, they use chunky pork fat. The chunky pork fat is just like this. So to make this, you take the sheet of pork fat and you just simmer it in the stock until it's soft. And once it's soft enough, you just take it out and you just break it up into chunks. So the, we use this as a favorite oil and also topping as well. Okay, and the next next part is the noodles. And noodles for Jiro style ramen. Uh, what we just made is a reverse cut noodles. So Ramen noodles can be breaked up into three different shapes. First one is flat, second one is square, and the third one is the reverse. Okay, so first of all, the flat one, the noodle sheet is thinned out very um, thin and then cut into Y noodle noodles. Okay? And the square shape one, the width and the thickness is the same, so it makes a uh, square shape. So most type of ramen is in the square shape, but for the Jiro style ramen, we use a reverse cut uh, ramen noodles. But these are, um, the noodle sheet is very thick and cut into thin piece of noodles, okay? So it makes that rectangular shape. And, but flat one is also rectangular, but the um, texture is completely different because um, So let me explain with the flat noodles. So this top surface right here, this part is rolled out with a roller so it's nice and smooth. But this part, the side, the part that was cut with the cutter is very rough. So flat noodles has a smooth surface, larger smooth surface, surface area. For the reverse cut noodles, that rough surface that was cut with the cutter is larger than that smooth surface uh, that was made with the roller. So the reverse cut has a larger rough surface area, so it picks up the soup more than the flat noodles or the square noodles. So that makes it better and more uh, pairs well with the Jiro style ramen. Okay, so Jiro style ramen uses reverse cut noodles. Okay, for the toppings. So here's the five common toppings for the Jiro style ramen. First one is boiled bean sprouts and cabbage, a lot of them. And number two, minced garlic. Number three, chunky pork fat. Number four, pork chashu. And lastly, spicy tempura bits. And Jiro style ramen is known for the amount of toppings. As you can see, there's a mountain of uh, boiled bean sprouts and cabbage. And that's a, one of the biggest unique characteristics of Jiro style ramen, amount of portion, uh, amount of toppings on that ramen. Okay. And other characteristics of uh, Jiro style ramen is the yellow signboard. Okay. Most Jiro style ramen has a yellow signboard. Um, it started off from the original ramen Jiro and all the other ramen shop that was inspired by the original ramen Jiro 
uh, also have the yellow signboard. So most Jiro style ramen shops have the yellow signboards. And number two, uh, unique order style. So ramen Jiro, Jiro style ramen, you get to choose the amount of noodles, amount of boiled vegetables, amount of garlic, amount of pork fat, and the saltiness. But once you go into the shop, the staff won't ask you for the preference. If you want to change it up, you have to say it yourself. They won't ask for it. So if you don't say anything, they'll just make everything normal and regular. So if you want to, if you want more vegetables, you just ask for more vegetables. And if you want more salty or less salty, you just tell the staff and you can adjust your um, Jiro style ramen. Okay. And number three, you must stay quiet in the shop. Okay, like I said, Jiro style ramen shops, they have like a cult-like culture. And when you go to, into the shop, no one's talking, no one's in their phone. Uh, all you hear is people slurping on their Jiro style ramen. Um, that's one of the rules out of Jiro style ramen. Okay, so next I want to talk about the stock. Okay, so here's the stock. Okay, so here's the stock for the Jiro style ramen. As you can see, the stock is completely mossified. And the density is around 8%. So the stock is very uh, concentrated. And I want to um, briefly talk about the method, the steps of uh, making this ramen stock. Okay, so to make the ramen stock for Jiro, so the first step is to put the bone and water into the stock pot. So for the Jiro, we use uh, pork bone, and we usually use pork backbone and pork leg bone for Jiro style ramen. So you put that bone and water into the stock pot, and then you heat it up and bring it to a boil. And once the stock is brought to a boil, the scum is going to start to float up on the surface of the stock. So you want to remove all the scum until it's completely clean uh, to make the stock taste, uh, have a clear tasting stock. Okay. So once the scum removal is complete, uh, number four, you want to keep that rapid boil until you're, you have your desired density. So we usually aim for density 8%. Uh, so you just keep boiling until desired density. And the amount of, uh, approximately the time from step one to four is around six to eight hours and you'll reach that density eight percent okay and lastly uh, once the stock is complete you want to strain and quickly chill the stock okay so, so that's how that's the stock making method for your ramen stock so I'm, now I want to show you how to strain the ramen stock So people say that the straining process is the hardest job at a ramen shop. So um, I want to just quickly show you guys how to strain out the stock. Okay, so what you need is a strainer and a spatula and something to scoop up the stock. Okay. So first, I'm going to show you how to um, strain the stock by hand. I'm just going to scoop up the stock and just put it in the strainer. And then 
as you can see, there's these like small bits and pieces, and this fills up the hole of the strainer, so it usually it stops. The soup is not um, strained out smoothly. So what, now you want to use a spatula to scrape off the bits and pieces from the side to strain out the stock. So yeah, just like this. So when you're um, straining by hand, it's a lot of work. So today I want to show you the ramen stock strainer. <clears throat> so this is going to make your life a lot easier with the ramen stock. So this ramen strainer, how it works is that there's like this uh, strainer inside and the strainer inside will rotate and uses that force to strain out the stock. And there's these scraper that will scrape off that bits and pieces off the strainer so it keeps that straining process smooth. Okay, so let's give it a try. And also, so I just turned on the machine. As you can see, the strainer is um, spinning. And you can adjust the speed by this dial right here. You can make it slower or faster. And the speed will change. Okay. So let's give it a try. So you just take the stock and you just pour it directly into the lid. And as you can see, the stock is drained out very quickly, smoothly, and less work. And as you can see, when I'm pouring the stock, the bone is caught on the lid. So all you need to do is just throw away this bone later. So when I did the straining process by hand, one scoop of the stock took me around, I mean two scoops took me like two minutes, but in that two minutes, I did like 10 or 15 uh, scoops of the strainer, so the stock. So using the stock strainer, it makes our um, straining process a lot easier and faster, cuts down on labor costs. And all I need to do is throw away this bone and also all that bits and pieces. The stock is completely um, strained out. So the bits and pieces are very dry now. Okay. Okay, so this is the ramen stock strainer. So today I'm going to use this stock to uh, make the Jiro style ramen. Okay, so I'm just going to take a couple scoops of this stock. The stock is very creamy.
Okay, so the first step is to boil the noodles. So here's a reverse cut jiro style noodle, ramen noodles. Okay. So and before boiling the noodles, what you want to do is uh, just like lightly press the noodles so it's slightly wavy, just like this. So I'm going to do it with another batch. Just lightly press, press the noodles so it's slightly wavy. Just like this. And I'm going to boil these for four minutes. Okay. And what you want to do is mix the noodles for the first five or ten seconds and four minutes. Okay, so while we wait for the noodles to uh, be ready, <clears throat> let's prepare the sauce and flavored oil. So here's that soy sauce base flavored oil, I mean sorry, flavoring sauce. So I'm going to take one full scoop of this flavoring sauce into the ramen bowl. And one full scoop of this pork fat. And a little bit of garlic. So now that the sauce and the flavored oil is ready, I'm going to tor torch the chashu. Here's a pork chashu. I'm going to torch the chashu so it has a nice um, grilled surface. So just like this. Now let's prepare the boiled vegetables. So for the boiled vegetables, uh, we're going to use cabbage and bean sprouts. I'm going to take the ramen uh, noodle bo boiling strainer. I'm going to take um, the cabbage, put it into the basket, bean sprouts as well. And let's boil these for around a minute. So the vegetables should be ready, so I'm going to take it out. Strain out the water completely. This water is going to dilute the soup. And put it into a bowl. Okay, so the noodles should be ready soon. So I'm going to uh, pour the hot stock into that sauce and oil. I'm going to take one full scoop. This is a 300 milliliter uh, ladle. I'm just going to take one full scoop of the stock. And the noodle should be ready soon in 10 seconds.
and make sure this water is completely strained out. And put the noodle into the soup. And just line up the noodles a little. Okay, now I'm going to take the vegetables. So Jiro style ramen is known to have the mountain of boiled vegetables. Next, I'm going to take the chashu. And just put it on the side. Two pieces. And more garlic, more minced garlic on the side as a topping. And also, we're going to use that pork fat as a topping as well. So I'm going to take couple scoops of this pork fat and put a half scoop of that flavoring sauce and I'm going to season the pork fat okay and this goes on top just like that and lastly we have that spicy tempura bits so I made this by mixing um, uh, chili flakes and tempura batter and just deep fry it until it's nice and crispy. I'm just going to put this on top. Okay. Just going to wipe the sides. Okay, so this is how to make your Jiro style ramen. So um, thank you so much for watching this class. And then uh, we hope to see you again like in the next class. So thank you so much. Bye-bye.